The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have a mixed market right now. We got the NASDAQ. 100 down by 90 points the story this morning now it is fed week folks that is the story of the week but the story of the morning is apple trading lower we'll kick it off before we even get into the indices because it's, it's going to shape some of the option action and what is so intriguing was i was talking about this last week right i've been talking about it i'm on a 12 pro max folks the 16s are coming out and i actually found myself saying after they've up released all the information all right now the, what's going on today is you have the opening weekend of orders analysts coming out saying you know what they're not where they probably should have been for this super cycle in terms of this first weekend and i'll tell you i was super excited myself i'm about four years out from a phone it makes sense and then what do i hear well i hear first of all apple intelligence isn't quite going to be available just yet well that's no reason to get it um there just might be a lot of people in my similar situation saying, hey, I was going to get it. I thought this was going to be the new revolution. This was going to be Apple intelligence. This was going to be the super cycle that you had to upgrade for. Now Apple intelligence isn't even here yet. It's not even going to be available when you buy the phone, etc. Nonetheless, Apple, we kick it off. And boy, if this is a problem for Apple, then 165 is in play because this super cycle is what it's all about right now and you look at right we just go back this year i'm going to put this on a weekly for apple you see that apple actually traded lower into about april and then we took off to the top side okay versus you take a look at the s p it was a straight shot upside for the s p at the beginning of the year so do not think that Apple is infallible here at these lofty levels. If it turns out that this super cycle is not going to take shape in the way it has. And I'll tell you this. I actually found myself Googling, when's the 17 coming out? When's, when's potentially the 17 going to come out? Which is remarkable when you think about. Yeah. And that's uh, the 16 isn't even being sold yet. And I am the perfect target customer. I have the means to upgrade my phone. I'm about four years out from the phone. I want Apple intelligence. My goodness, I'm consuming news and, and market information 24 hours a day. The phone is what I use in many situations. And what am I doing? I'm saying, ah, maybe, I'm wait. maybe I'll wait one more. Maybe this isn't the cycle. Maybe it's the 17. Boy, and then I wake up and you got Apple driving this market lower. And I would be very skeptical of this rally folks apple added one trillion dollars in market cap from the lows to the high the run-up it had folks we never had a trillion dollar company until uh 2019 or 2020 i remember the anticipation and meanwhile you had apple create a trillion dollars of value from the lows of this april to the highs of july in three months maybe some of that might be given back if it turns out that guess what those phone sales just aren't going to do it you're at 217 today and boy look at 217 on this chart right i'm putting it right here 217 on this chart yeah 209 is just the 382 we've made it all the way down on the spike in august to 196 on that pullback in the market on august 5th you got to watch apple today it's the biggest equity in the world it's been driving this market higher as you've added a trillion dollars in market cap from april until july and what do you have this morning you got a little bit of cracks and this is everything, folks. It's supposed to be a super cycle like we've never seen. And the reason why I'm harping on it, talking about it in the beginning of the program, we haven't even done the indices. This is going to shape a lot of the action. If it turns out that this is nothing near the super cycle Apple thought it was, they probably should have had Apple intelligence ready. They should have had it. I wanted to upgrade that phone and be able to play with all the new bells and whistles that come with that phone. And that's not the case. And it takes quite a driver right now. My phone's fine. Okay, my phone's fine to last another year or two years or something like that. I just thought, you know what? This might be the good opportunity. We're four years out, battery suffering a little bit, and we're going to get a real next-generation phone with new tools 
that can help me in my everyday life, right? Can help me in my work life, productivity. That's not the case. And yeah, you got Apple down two and a half percent. Market hasn't even opened yet. You're pushing session lows. And if you had to press me if it was going to close lower or higher today, if these reports sustain, I would say it closes lower even more than that. This is a monumental program uh, problem for Apple. When you look at the run up it's had based on this super cycle, okay, and we'll get into some of the dates. Was this one that got announced June 11th? I got to look at the exact dates. That might have been it when they really started talking about, hey, this is going to be on, man. So 193 was where this thing really accelerated. I'll pull up the dates. Maybe somebody can help me in the den. When did the when did the market really start figuring out when Apple announced? I'll have to go back to that Apple announcement because when Apple announced that you needed the newest phones to be able to use Apple intelligence within a day or two, the market was like, hey, analysts were like, hey, this is going to be a monumental deal. This is going to be the super cycle. And guess what? Opening weekend of orders, not quite there yet. So surprising to see the S&P down just five when you get the biggest company in the world showing a little bit of cracks in terms of that acceleration. All right, we go back to the S&P 500. Now, we got a little bit of a rollover, a little bit. We have a rollover in futures. So do not be distracted by this gap, okay? S&P futures actually down by five points right now, trading at 56.86. But when you look at the number, we are now only 40 points, 30 points away from where futures have traded, not cash, right? Futures. And you get that rollover, you get the pop. When we do get the rollover, we're on a new futures contract. So nonetheless, we're negative by five. NASDAQ 100, of course, getting weighed on by Apple out there. Negative by 100 points, 19,665. The Dow in positive territory rolls over as well. Yeah, that's a high print for the futures. We're going to be talking about 42,000 on the futures in the Dow. Pretty remarkable the Dow. Bitcoin down $1,300 over the weekend. You're trading at 58575 We jump over to crude. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, look at this run, man. Talk about some volatility in crude. Back above $70. You know what? I was having this conversation last week with my dad. It is pretty remarkable. So now at Publix, I had to check myself. I was having this conversation a couple weeks ago. When you're at the checkout line at Publix in Florida, okay, and the single serving sodas that are in the refrigerated, the refrigerator at the checkout, right? The impulse items, but the drinks in particular. They used to be 99 cents, right? They used to be a buck 19. A single serving drink, and I'm not talking about the elevated levels of Red Bull, whether you're getting the pricey action. I'm just talking about what's a Coca-Cola, what's a Diet Coke, what's a Mountain Dew, a 20-ounce soda when you're checking out. $2.59. $2.59. The reason why I bring it up, we know inflation is here. My brain can't compute that a gallon of fuel is trading near the same price as a single serving soda at checkout those two don't mesh and it probably means crude has to go up because i don't see soda prices going down and you can't tell me that you can buy a 20 ounce bottle of diet coca-cola versus going out and buying a full gallon of fuel i keep wanting to say crude oil but the utility value now we all know we love we love snacks we love impulse items etc right but that one is really tough to spread you're telling me that If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by four right now. NASDAQ 100 off by 96. Can't help but want to focus on Apple shares to see where we go. We're down about another 15, 20 cents since we were talking about it. You're making lows at 216.35 right now. You're at 216.80. We closed at 222.50 on Friday. And the story out there, so I'll just pull it up right here. And you have TFI Securities Analyst. Ming-Chi Kuo, maybe, uh, said in a social media post late Sunday, okay, iPhone 16 pre-orders, 37 million units, down almost 13% from the iPhone 15 first week pre-orders. Year-over-year drop is due to lower than expected demand for the 16 Pro series. That's me. That's what I was going to do. I was going to get the big one, hold it for four or five years. Uh, you know, for what I use my phone for when you intermingle it with... Recreational, work, life, pictures with Tommy, uh, being able to function on there, et cetera, and just storing the, the amount of storage that I have on there with pictures, et cetera. But yeah, this this should be paid attention to, folks. I keep parking on it. The soft Mac series demand is due to the fact that Apple Intelligence, the major selling point, is not available at launch. Folks, I hadn't read this when I was talking last segment. Okay, not a coincidence. They should have had Apple Intelligence ready. I bet they were trying to, okay? They didn't have Apple Intelligence ready. That was the whole reason. People are always used to upgrading their battery. They're always used to upgrading their camera, right? It was going to be a defining moment of technological change that is not occurring right now on this phone. And I think you might see a real reaction here to Apple once the market opens. And maybe not the second it opens, right? But in general days, weeks, months, okay? Whew. He also pointed to intense, comp intense competition in China, especially from 
Huawei and other homegrown rivals. Yeah, some of the data out in recent months has been pointing to that one as well. But that should be alarming. Now, what's tough here is, right, there's a number of factors that go into a launch, I'm sure. What was the weekend? What were people doing? How did that weekend line up? Where was that weekend weekend on the calendar, etc.? Excuse me, but nonetheless, you got Apple right now down, what, $6 we're looking at. You're approaching a 3% drop. And I believe that was the date. We're going to look into it. That they launched that in terms of June 11th, where you really caught an acceleration to the upside. Pretty remarkable. You make up Monday morning a Fed day. And yeah. That's not the focus. It's Apple. And their super cycle is not occurring. All right. We're checking out Fang. Let's see what this is. For our man EKS and the YouTube Tigers Den. Diamondback Energy. There we go. That rings a bell. Quite a symbol, right? Fang, in terms of all the Fang equities, etc. Uh, Diamondback Energy, an independent oil and natural gas company, acquires, develops, explores, and exploits unconventional onshore oil and natural grass reserves in the good old Permian Basin in West Texas. So domestic producer focuses on the development of Sprawberry and Wolf Camp formations in the Midland Basin. It owns and operates midstream infrastructure assets in the Midland and Delaware Basin to the Permian Basin, founded in 2007, Midland, Texas. Okay, so let's scroll down for a second here. Not bad. We're talking about a $50 billion company. You always like to see, <coughs> excuse me, some degree of, of having, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, what does happen here, folks, right? So this is a $50 billion company. You got a company with 295 million shares outstanding, out, out, shares outstanding, trading at $172 a share, $51 billion company. And what this is, is let's see. So you say it's a 6.2% di dividend to boost. Um, Yeah, I mean the technical setup isn't bad here in terms of quite a little bit of a pullback. You got some oil. Uh, you got some oil. You got some volume going. How did oil pop in there? How's the brain work, right? Uh, you do have some volume, right? Where is that first spike? September tenth. Yeah, a lot of these companies, I'm sure, really struggling as crude's approaching sixty four, sixty three dollars. Not sure that you're factoring in, and you are factoring it in. But it is amazing when you think about, like I was just talking about that a 20 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola, which is basically just water, is somehow selling at the same price of a gallon of fuel, which can be used for more uses and utility value than, than almost any item practically on our planet to that degree. Man, look at this thing, yeah. COVID down to 14 bucks, you're up to 172, you're up to 214. Yeah, quite a pullback. You know, what is interesting here is, let's see, you're almost in an uptrend channel, and this might be the bottom leg of that uptrend channel right depends where you line them up those kind of line up a little bit you don't take that bottom portion it's pretty close you know and you ballpark some type of a parallel line here you know i think on a longer term basis it doesn't make sense that a gallon of fuel outside of Publix is going to cost you the same amount of money as a 20 ounce bottle of water with a little bit of flavoring like coca-cola on the inside I found myself having that conversation this weekend because I couldn't believe it. I was telling my dad that at checkout at Publix, because I actually, what happened was I'm checking out at Publix and I said, you know what, today I'm going to get myself a Diet Mountain Dew. That's what I was going to do. And I looked down and I saw the price was two fifty nine. I said, you got to be kidding me. Checkout prices are two fifty nine. There's no way I'm paying two fifty nine for a single serving uh, of soda, which is unhealthy anyway, even diet, you know. And so I couldn't believe it. And I'm telling my dad like the next day if I and I'm saying to myself they couldn't have been 259. I was probably that was probably the expensive stuff like the Red Bull. Maybe it was a buck 89 or something like that. Maybe it was 219. No, so does 259. Uh and I digress not to like old man rant out there at prices, but I'm putting it in the context of crude and you do have crude spiking a bit today, right? And we have the stock probably going to open higher. You got a bid ask that straddled around the price yesterday, but you have an ask as high as 174. Looks like you're going to pop a little bit with the price of crude this morning. So, you know, if you like crude at $70, which I think in the longer term, if you can hold out, 
Um, yeah, and always nice when you get a domestic play, right? You got no political risk, you get nothing. It's a domestic play in Texas. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff going on. Um, yeah, the one thing that is interesting is, you know, if we do get a weakening dollar, right? Some of these companies that are, you know, producing overseas versus doing everything domestically, you're going to a benefit to a certain degree. But yeah, you put it back on the weekly. I mean, that's a pretty well-defined channel line. You know, pick a spot, put a stop in it because you never know. Crude can get a little funky. It can get a little crazy. This thing was at $14, so I wouldn't let it ride to that degree. Make sure you got a stop in there. You know, nothing saying you can't go back to where this thing was February 5th when you had all that volume when it spiked higher. You got a gap there. But yeah, I like it. Why not? $51 billion company. You trade down from 214 on the crude pullback, it looks like. And yeah, you got crude back above $70 this morning. All right, folks, stay tuned. It's Fed Week. We're going to talk a little bit of different equities, but we'll see how Apple opens as well. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays. For his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got Apple opening, and yeah, it's diving lower at the open. Uh, you're down more than 3% right now, almost $7 to the downside. S&P's actually ticked higher. You got into positive territory in the opening bell. NASDAQ 100 trading lower with Apple, of course, contributing there off 123 points. You actually got the Dow up by 232 right now. That's a gain of about half a percent. You got the Russell 
up by half a percent as well. S&Ps are flat. And yeah, Apple, they're going to be chopping around today. You're going to see some volatility. And it was, just for some context in terms of how much of an impact this news has put into the equity that could be sucked out. This is the press release that started it all in terms of June 10th, 2024, as an Apple comes out with, they're introducing Apple Intelligence, okay? Uh, it's going to put generative models at the core of the iPhone, iPad, iMac, etc. Now you go back to the chart of Apple. There's your daily. And there is, I didn't have to, you know, charts say it all sometimes. Now there is the 10th, there is the 11th, folks. Day after they come out with that, you have Apple open at 193 and within two days you're up to 220 $27 in two days now you get a little volatility from there you come back down you do eventually make the run up to 237 but just in two days Apple added $27 to this equity so be careful you're only down $6 right now and they're talking about it might not be the super cycle you thought and I'm telling you that I agree Because, yeah, nobody wants to wait. You're not going to buy a phone and wait. We don't live in that age anymore. Everybody wants things right now, can you know, not even close. It's a, it's a head scratcher. That's why I think I'm so intrigued. Because if this is a real problem, as you're seeing it, we're off by three and a quarter percent. Apple could be down 10 or 15 bucks today. There's no reason it can't, folks. When you moved up $15 on June 11th, and then you had... A trading range of thirteen dollars the following day, and you're down seven bucks right now. So we'll keep our eye on it. Nonetheless, we jump around. Nvidia shares down by two point two percent today. They've had quite a pop the last few days coming into that number, trading at one sixteen right now. We check in on some of the other magnificent seven seven Amazon shares off by one point three percent right now for Amazon. We jump over to Microsoft, barely in the red by a dollar fifteen. Meta shares this morning down by three dollars fifty four cents. Tesla. Trending down 2.3% for Tesla shares. All right. What else do we got pulled up to talk about this morning? We got a few. What are we going to talk about? Let's see. Well, let's get over to the, the Fed Watch tool because it is Fed Week. It's happening. And look at the market. Absolutely remarkable how quickly this thing shifts. Remember when the conversation was over? It was going to be 25 basis points. That was it. Look at where we are, folks. The market is almost two to one now that we're getting 50. Two to one. How did that come in? Remarkable. You check out yields right now. I mean, all we're doing is chopping around at where we were the last three or four days. Higher price, lower yield. That's for sure. We got the 10 year right now sitting at 3.65%. And as we pull up where we are on that yield curve. The two-year, now 3.56, and the 10-year, 3.65. So disinverted by nine basis points, right? Almost 10 basis points. Yeah, that was inverted for an extended period of time. The two-year, now almost uh, 10 basis points below where the 10-year is trading. And you see, even the two-year, down another basis point today. You see the short end of the curve, right? Lower in yield as the odds have climbed that the Fed is going to go 50. It never ends, man. It's going to be shocking if they go 50. Because why are they going 50? Like everyone says, you know, for the reasons they state, in terms of the slowdown occurring in the data, what well, will that alarm the market? We will find out. All right, you take a look at this market. So Apple, of course, this is the heat map here. A lot of red in big tech. All the tiny ones are in the green. But the big ones are all in the red, right? Even Broadcom, you're talking about a $770 billion company, down almost 2% right now. NVIDIA is down 2%. You got everything in the... And then you have uh, some of the smallers. Yeah, but the NASDAQ in the red. Let's jump over to the Dow. Dow right now is positive 265 what do we got? Yeah, you always got to jump to Home Depot because that stock trades at $383. is up almost 1%. Goldman Sachs is another big one that trades at 45 You're up 1.3%. McDonald's, a $300 stock, is up 1% as well. This is where it's so intriguing, right? You got Apple, the biggest company in the world, down 3%. 
but not as large of an impact because they're only trading at $200. Amazon trading under $200. Johnson Johnson's in the positive. Procter & Gamble. JP Morgan trading up. But you get the Dow up by 256 Look at the NASDAQ. Let's see. Can't help but... Yeah, look at this. This is a big one, folks. This is a really big one. Pay attention to Apple, okay? You're down 3.6%. You just lost $8. Pretty sure Apple just lost $200 billion in market cap. No, 15. I thought it was 25 billion. Okay. Yeah, over 100 billion in. No, what do you? Yeah, eight bucks. Man, well, as I mentioned, how much can it drop by? Well, it can drop by whatever it added the days following that announcement was to the tune of almost 25 dollars. You're down eight right now. Whew. Can you imagine? You see Apple down five, six percent today. You're down 3.7 percent today so far. That's a wild one, man. But yeah. There's no impetus, folks. Apple intelligence isn't here. I'm not going to go out and spend $1,200 when I got a working phone. Why not just wait? You avoid the, the rush of everything, and here's the problem, right? If there's not an absolute incentive to go buy now, then you lose that acceleration. And somebody always says, if you're in the middle of a cycle, to themselves I'm talking about, well, when's a new phone coming out? You always want to buy it in the beginning, right? You don't want to be the person that buys the phone right at the end of the cycle because then in that case, you might as well wait for the new cycle and buy the older version that's a discount. You don't want to be at the end of the cycle. If you're going to buy a phone and you know you're going to do it in the next year, you might as well buy the phone at the beginning of the cycle as in you get that phone throughout and I don't think there's an impetus right now at all. And you're seeing Apple down 3.7% because I'm telling you, because I was jazzed, man. I was excited. I had been looking at when the new iPhone was coming. And now what am I doing? I'm Googling, you know what, man, when's the 17 coming? If I can't even use Apple Intelligence on the 16 yet, when's the 17 coming? And you know what does happen as well? I found myself thinking too, and this is how people, it's very easy, it should be, to talk yourself out of a $1,200 phone purchase, folks. Make sure you need it, right? I'm trying to... You, doing that calculation in my own head, right? I'm saying, do I need it? Do I need it? I'm saying, well, the phone's almost four years old. You know, I can get some trade-in value for it still. You're trying to rationalize it. Um, no, I don't need it if the intelligence isn't there. Yeah, down $8 for Apple shares this morning. Watch out. Amazon down a percent. Oh, Microsoft makes it into the positive. 431, there you go. All right, other stories we got out today. Pretty remarkable, the Fed, right? Yeah. How about this BMW story with their brakes? I'm especially intrigued because I have a BMW. Mine's a 2018, I believe. But quite a story. Quite a story indeed. 1.5 million cars. Rolls Royces, sedans. Yeah, SUVs, the whole batch. And I believe it's 2022, 2023. What's remarkable here is how they went into this and see if they get fined. Because they started this in October of 2023, almost a year ago. The first recall was only 80,000 vehicles. Yeah, we'll get into it, folks. But they got everything. Even $420,000 Rolls Royces, they got a problem over there. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S and P's right now, negative by ten points. You see a little volatility zoning in on the opening bell. There, we spike up to almost fifty six ninety four. We're back to fifty six eighty. Keeping in mind, again, the futures did roll over, so you're going to see a higher price print, but not indicative necessarily of trading higher. You have Apple trading lower today in dramatic fashion. That's driving the Nasdaq one hundred lower by about eight tenths percent right now. Dow, the only major index right now in the positive, up by two hundred points. We check in on gold. Gold. Makes a high at 226.17 last night. 26.17. Right now, you're basically flat trading at 26.11. Coming off all-time highs for gold last week. Silver, quite the acceleration as well. Up to 31.46 for silver. And as I mentioned, notes, you got a little bit of lower price, higher yield. We jump over to the dollar index this morning. You talk about it. That's probably going to help gold, right? 167. Take a little bit of a longer-term look and look at this area, man. Critical area for the dollar you break below that's your daily okay here's your weekly and as you can see critical area you break you break below this area as we come into and you talk about timing right we're coming into the fed 50 is now the conversation what happened at 25 going to be so intriguing where our chairman power goes on wednesday you have the announcement at 2 p.m eastern time press conference live at 2 30 we'll air that live right here on tfnn but you break below here i mean you don't you don't have to i could i could show a small child that's never seen the stock market before this chart and i say if this line goes below this area of about 100 where's the next place it's going to you say well it's probably going down here somewhere right let's back it up even further yeah 90 maybe 97.50 where it chopped around for a period of time but you broke below this 100 area and it really seems like 90 is the next intuitive area and that's the area we were at towards the end of 2020. That's the area where we were at also in the beginning of 2018. And this morning, you got some dollar weakness at 166. All right, you jump over to Zillow. So Zillow gets a little bit of a lift today. They get uh, Webbush. Webbush, yeah, they upgraded the stock from neutral to outperform. Raised the price target from $50 to $80. All right, you pop to 60, you're back to 58.95. You know, I saw this this morning, though, and I found myself saying, hey, you back it up, quite the earnings disaster. When is that? November of 21. Now, remember, folks, this is when they were in the flipping business. Remember when they were in the flipping business? They were just going to start buying and selling everybody's houses. What a flawed idea that was. Up to 212, the market takes it all back. You're back at $59. This stock is trading where you were in 2014. 51.42 you were at in July of 2014. Now you're at $59, but 
you know, really, you were just at fifty dollars almost this month. You were at fifty one sixteen, right? It's September sixteenth. That's this month, okay? And you know, the logic behind it goes. My dad has had these conversations. He's in real estate, obviously. We put the poll out in the den. Who's going to use a buyer's agent and pay them, you know, 2%, 3%? It's not happening. And what is that going to do? That's going to make a service like Zillow much more valuable when you take one side of the agent out of the equation. But the reason why you can take that agent out of the equation, and listen, it's in, unfortunate if you're a buyer's agent, right? What do you got to do? You got to figure out how to create value. You got to figure out the type of contracts that you can get people into where it creates value for them, creates value for you, and creates value compared to other agents in that market because the old pricing is gone. And the old pricing is gone, folks, because there wasn't enough value provided for that pricing. When you can find the house that you want yourself, and a lot of people do that, right? They're researching the houses. If you want to go into a market and you don't want to do the work and you want to find a buyer's agent and they're going to show you all the houses that meet your criteria, that makes sense. But that's not what people do these days. There's too much information readily available on the internet for you to find the homes that you want to see etc. Right. So what's going to happen? Zillow is going to become more important because they're going to fill that role. And you're trading at fifty nine dollars. You're up by two point two percent right now for Zillow shares. Got to keep checking in on Apple. Yeah, you're chopping around at that two fourteen, two fifteen area. It looks like you're down by seven dollars and fifty six cents. But boy, in the days to come, how do you find a bid unless we get some reassuring data that those initial numbers on the weekend aren't holding? You know, you got Buffett selling some of his Apple a while back, right? This has been a historic run. And you're still, you know, almost where you were trading at on September 10th. The low there was 216.73. We're trading at 215 right now. And meanwhile, this super cycle, I think the reason why I'm harping on it most is because I found myself having these same conversations. I mean, the order dates are coming right now. I was all excited. If this thing blew it away, if they were like, let's go, you'll be up with Apple Intelligence by next week, I probably would have been making those orders, but it's not happening. And then what happens is if it's really not worthwhile, what do you do? You say, well, I'm going to avoid the whole hoopla of the initial launch. I'll let everybody order theirs. I'll come on on the back end. I won't have to wait for a delay. But then what happens is, is that if you do that, then, boy, there's a real possibility that come a month down the line, two months down the line, you say, you know what? I don't really need one just yet. Maybe I'll wait, and there'll be another one out in six or nine months. Yeah. All right. What else do we got going on? Oh, back to BMW for a moment, right? So... They got to recall 1.5 million vehicles. It stretches across, and I looked this up earlier in terms of what cars are affected. Yeah, and so to pull up what cars, if you're looking out there, the cars that are affected, okay, were vehicles produced between June of 2022 and August of 2024. And they include BMW X models, except for the X3 and X4. So what are you talking about? X5, X7, I think it goes up from there. 5 Series, the 7 Series, the Rolls-Royce Spectre. We're going to talk about this one in a second. Mini Cooper and Countryman. But yeah, you know, you got a bunch of X models, the 5 Series, the 7 Series, Rolls-Royces, Mini Coopers, Countryman, over a period of over two years. Okay, so those are the vehicles that are out there. And it's... It, the fact that it includes these $420,000 Rolls Royce is amazing. But the most intriguing part here is the reason why it's failing, in my opinion. Now, they're going to dig into this and figure out why they tried to recall 80000 Now they're up to $1.5 million, right? First, they just tried to halt sales of all the Rolls Royce Spectres built over a three-day period, okay? June 20th. 2023 to June 23rd, 2023. Then it ballooned to over a year from January 2023 to July 2024, more than a quarter of the vehicles produced each year. And given the recalls in other markets, the number's probably even higher. But what's 
remarkable here is the technology is getting in the way of things and that's what's screwing things up the braking system that prompted the recall is known as brake by wire we're going to talk about this because you know i found myself my car's 2018 right now and i don't want this brake by wire system i want hydraulic technology that's built into most cars and that's the problem everything's electronic it's run by wires and it's not working we'll be right back to finish it up folks the gold report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, I apologize, folks. I didn't know that was happening. My bad. We'll jump to it again. Uh, thanks to my producer there. I was jumping through these numbers, and I was just mentioning, you know, it's intriguing when you take a look at the market watch here. NVIDIA off 2.3. Apple off by 3%, right? You got Amazon slightly in the red as well. Tesla off by 1.8%. But we get back to that BMW story real quickly. Uh, so what is going on is this is not the hydraulic braking system that many cars are used to. 
okay? And that's the issue that's driving the recall. Brake by wire uses electronic impulses instead of hydraulic technology built into most cars. Brakes since the 1920s. And, <coughs> excuse me, these, the chips were being built in Hungary, okay? And workers producing the circuit boards failed to maintain a sufficient clean environment. And the last part I want to get to, and I would say it. Now, no accidents or injuries, thankfully, okay? But it's going to take months. BMW has got to fix this one. And when you look at it here, a rising number of recalls, serious questions regarding automakers' due diligence in their supply chains. Perhaps the sector needs to focus and concentrate on core competences. I mean, they're building computers almost at this point, right? And you're doing it in Hungary with chip factories that are failing and the brakes no longer use hydraulics. They now use wires. That's a problem. When you talk about, listen to yourself sometimes. I have a BMW right now. What am I saying to myself? You know what I said? I said, man, if I'm going to go buy a used BMW, I'm going to get the one that was made before this recall and buy a used 2021 that still has hydraulic brakes that isn't going to fail because the wire isn't working properly. Pretty remarkable. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Basil Chapman's in there getting ready for the Tiger Technicians Hour coming up next. Have a great Monday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one, folks. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust.